Okay, this one. But I do get to show some chaparral, and a little bit later on, though I won't really go into detail about it, we'll get to see some serpentine and some gabbro, so that'll tie us tie this, this sedge talk into some of the other talks that we've had this, these couple of days. Um, and this is going to be more, I guess you'd say, old school. You aren't going to see any, any, excuse me, you're not going to see any um, cladograms, um, there's not going to be any statistical analysis in this, um, but yet it was still one of those species that once you start looking at it in the field and doing some comparisons in the herbarium, then, then it, it, it pretty easily falls out as something, something new. Um, and hopefully I can still use the term new. We published this a couple of years ago, but most people probably don't know about it. Um, that's the article. Um, the senior author, um, Peter Zika, is collecting it there at the Megalia Serpentine um, back in 2012. And a couple of, just a couple of photos, not a photos, but diagrams from the article. Um, at this point, excuse me, at this point we know it from four different areas up here. And you'll hear me repeat these, these place names on and off. Um, up here at the Megalia Serpentine in Butte County, at the Brownsville Gabbro in Yuma County, at um, Osceola Ridge, just west of Grass Valley in Nevada County, and down here at the Pine Hill Preserve along Highway 50 in El Dorado County. I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk about this picture, but I, I will just give a little bit about um, how we separate the the species in the carrot section um, Acrocystis, of which this um, carrot serophila is, is a member. Sorry if I don't go into all of the carrot's morphology and stuff. Some of you might want to hear it, but you'll, most of you probably don't. Um, that would be a whole nother, almost a, a workshop. Um, within carrot's acrocyst, section Acrocystis, the perigenia are all hairy. Um, the, the pistolate spikelets are all short um, on the diagram there, one and two, and some down here, as usual with this group, the, the pistolate, I mean the, the salmon spikelet is at the tip. One of Peter's photographs showing a, a little cluster of, of perigenia here on a, a short pistolate spikelet. This group often um, comes with basal spikelets. So normally you're looking at this up here and calling that the inflorescence. But in this case, this spikelet down here is just the lowest non-basal spikelet. And so these spikelets here are the basal spikelets to these inflorescences. All the species are from upland habitats, which is somewhat unusual for or um, carex. We're used to them more being in, in, in wetter environments. Um, with the hairy perigenia, I forgot to mention that that's fairly unusual within our California carices. So that helps separate it, separate this group from most of the other carices that you'll find in California. Um, I guess I should mention that California has something like a hundred and 40 to 150 species of carrots out of the 2,000 or so worldwide species. So we get into this group and we've got about nine species in California. Um, but this is just a brief introduction. Really, it's, it's this talk, well, it's probably hard to see this particular map, but this maps the distribution of all nine species of, of carrot section acrocystis in California. The main ones we'll talk about are in the yellow here are the same four locations of Carex xerophila. Um, the orange is Carex brainerdii, which is kind of in the Sierra, Central Sierra up through Northern California, and it just goes up a little bit into Oregon. Um, the green is Carex rossii, and that really gets abundant up in Oregon and Washington and, and off eastward from there. 
And a little bit we'll, we'll see Carrots Globoso, which is along the coast here, all the way down into Baja, stops just short of the Oregon border. And I won't really go into the other species. Um, so there are several that are narrowly distributed. This um, Carrots serpent Serpenticola up here by the Oregon border um, is a, a CNPS or a CRPR, those two species. And I was going to mention that this carrot xerophila, it was described in 2014, but just last year, middle of the year sometime, um, CNPS added it as list 1B.2 to their, um, uh, their plant ring, uh, which has probably got a few people more interested in it now. Um, because anybody doing any work on serpentine and gabbro in this area is going to be looking for this one. It's a little bit better of a map. You can see that the carrot xerophila here is kind of separated from the carrot brainerdii and the carrot rossii um, geographically. And at this point, <laughs> my story today is mostly about my um, involvement with working out the status of this as a species. And it kind of ties into Adam's talk where, where somebody actually described something in, in their thesis but never actually published it. Um, my thesis was a, um, a um, floristic study of, of the genus Carrots in Butte County, which when it was done became one of the volumes of the, um, Butte, of the studies from the herbarium out of, out of Chico State. And in, in, that, in that article, I had included the Butte County populations of what is now known to be Carrot xerophila in Carrot's brain eye. But I made comments that the, the plants at the Megali Serpentine were somewhat different than what normal Carrot's brain eye, and I'll mention that here in following slides. Um, One of the differences that I was observing and for trying to sort out what the plants at the Megalia Serpentine were, I was having to deal with mostly trying to choose between whether I was going to call them carrots rossii or whether I was going to call them carrots brainerdii. Um, you'll see from this picture um, the carrot xerophila which I was calling Carrots brainerdii, actually looks a little bit more like Carrots rossii, the leaves are green. Um, Carrots brainerdii, the leaves are kind of blue-green, um, a little bit papillate inside the leaves, that kind of thing. But on the inflorescence characters, it wanted to key to Carrots brainerdii. Um, I was having trouble trying to decide whether to call it Carrots brainerdii or Carrots rossii because the keys then, and to a certain extent still now, want you to identify nerving across the perigenia. And so, in Carrots Bray Nerdy, I, I don't know if you can even see that out there, but there's a little bit of nerving across there, all the way up across the, the perigenium. And here on, on the, um, a sample of the xerophila, there's some nerving, and then the rossii, you might be able to make out a little bit of nerving down here at the bottom, but not up across the body of the perigenium. Pretty subtle. I was not very secure in, in what I was seeing in these. And in fact, to take these photos for you, I had to turn the, turn the perigenium quite a bit to get the light on it just right to, to really see any nerving at all. So luckily at the time, I was communicating with Joy Master Giuseppe as she was working on the genus Carrots for the Jepson Manual first edition of 1993, and she pointed out to me that Carrots rossii tends to have these bracts, which are bracts of the lowest non-basal spikelet, tend to be two to three times as long as the rest of the spikelet. In Carrots brainerdii, it's about as long or shorter, sometimes just a little bit longer, um, probably not the best sample there. And in this Carrots xerophila, a little hard to spot, but here's the here's the lowest bract coming up here, just a little bit higher than the rest of the inflorescence. So that's the basis on which I put the Megalia um, plants of well, 
Virophila into Brainerdii in the, the book that I wrote. And a little close up here, here's the Megalia serpentine, and the purple is serpentine and the light purple is gabbro. I looked at almost all of this serpentine and gabbro in Butte County to try to find more, and I'd also gotten on a lot of the serpentine out here with my work with the Forest Service, but I never quite got down here across the county line into Yuba County. So, that's kind of where the story sat for a while. That was 1992 when I published the, um, the, 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 the results of my thesis in the study from the herbarium. Until 2004-2005, when I'm out with, um, with work, work I was doing with the EW Department of Water Resources, checking out um, Papar Elenii, at the time, Senecio Elenii, down at the Brownsville Gabro. And then in 2005, also at the same place, and you can't see it in the photo, but across the fence here, which is private land, um, there's some clumps of a, a sedge that kind of looked like my odd, what I was still calling odd brain nerdy eye. And I might mention that we're standing on BLM land. So north across the fence is private land that they've already cleared a lot of chaparral off of it. And south, um, some of the, the chaparral has been converted into playing fields. And also out there, there's a campground, there's a baseball field, there's some buildings, there's a lot of private land and residences crowd, crowding into this place. Um, so the next year, it, it took me to go till the next year to actually go out and look for plants that I could collect to try to see if I could start making some sense out of, of what the differences were. And so I collected north and south of Brownsville um, Chaparral, um, and it's a little bit north of Brownsville, a little bit south of Brownsville, it's with um, McNabb Cypress, which it also is at um, Medalia Serpentine. And these are what the plants look like there. Now, if you remember the previous picture I showed of Xerophila, these are about the same. Pause, pause in the work again, and then in 2008, Karen Callahan, out of Grass Valley, sent me a sample that she collected at the Osceola Ridge Serpentine, just west of, of uh, Grass Valley. And I called that Carrick Gray Nerdy Eye because it kind of matched what I was calling Gray Nerdy Eye. But I made the note on the annotation it was part of an anomalous, a series of anomalous populations of, of um, Carrick Gray Nerdy Eye. And then the next year, 2009, I decided I needed to contact some people who knew more about sedges, and in particular this group of sedges. So I wrote to Bill Krims, who is the senior author in the Flora North America of the treatment of this section. And he didn't have anything to say about the identity of my specimens or where they fit in with the section, but he, he told me that um, Peter Zika and the Carrots Working Group uh, out of Corvallis, Oregon, well, the Carrots Working Group, um, Peter's up in Washington, had just con they had just contacted him asking for some help with a, uh, a different group of species within the section Acrocystis, mostly the Carrots Rossii, where there's some, some species, potential species things going on. So I contacted them, and they had started a garden study um, of these the various taxa in, in this group and they were looking for more specimens. So I kind of fortuitously in 2010, um, Karen Callahan and a couple of other members of, of the CNPS chapter out of Grass Valley, um, Bill Wilson and, and um, let's see, Bill Wilson and Cindy Brinker took me out to the Ose Osceola Ridge where I, I made some collections um, and got some live material for the Carrots Working Group. And I also went down and collected some material for them at a site that was new to me along in the, in the Pine Hill Preserve along Highway 50, um, a site that Samantha Heller had turned me on to because she had been down there with work that she does in, in the consulting business. So the Carrots Working Group and Peter Zika had material now that they were looking at 
And Peter had become convinced that, yes, this really is something distinct. So in 2012, he came down to Chico, and together we went to all four of those sites. Um, this is at the Megalia Serpentine, and I didn't mention that the, we're under McNabb Cypress here. And one reason I'm saying hidden in the chaparral, I mean, it is in the chaparral, where I'm parked here is a place where botanists have gone for many years in the local area to look at interesting plants and rare plants and all that kind of thing. Um, and here we're down at the Pine Hill Preserve um, with him taking some photographs and pressing plants in my living room later on in the evening. And so over the next couple of years, he did a bunch of measurements and comparisons of, of Brainerdii and Rossii and some other species. Um, so that we finally came out in 2014 um, with a description of this species in the Dronio. I wanted to mention that while working up the article for, for Madronio, I went back and tried to locate all of the specimens of this thing that I could find. Now, when I was working on my thesis, we didn't have the consortium to look things up on. And even though I had gone to UC Berkeley and, and the California Academy of Sciences looking at specimens, I was still fairly green, and I didn't dig into their, like, carrot spa files or any of that kind of thing. <laughs> But now, using the consortium, I found that the earliest collections were 1969 um, from, the from the Megalia Serpentine in Butte County by um, Tom Howell and Gordon True, and in Nevada County from Osceola Ridge by Gordon True. Um, and these were originally um, just distributed um, as just carrot spa. And what I don't know, it might have been in the Carrick Spuff folder when I was visiting over Berry uh, uh, around 1990, or you know, Tom Howell was still alive then, so it might not have been even out of his processing. Um, but I found that in 1993, they were all annotated to Carrick's Globosa by Tony Resnajek, who's kind of North American Mr. Carrick's. And then in 1998, 1998, one of those specimens Peter Zika had seen at, at the Gray Herbarium at Harvard, and he had called it an immature Paratrosii, and, in, and indeed, they are all very immature perigenia on these, and they're all shriveled, so you can't really see any of the characters. Um, but I have kind of wondered why Tom Howe, who, those who learned their botany with um, a California flora by Philip Munns, Tom Howe wrote the treatment of carrots. And so he must have had some question about it, maybe only because the perigenia were shriveled and he couldn't do a really good idea, or maybe he was wondering. Um, we just don't know, I'll probably never know. Um, just wanted to mention a couple of other, you know, since then there haven't been all that many collections. Um, the Sue Taylor and the Vern Oswald, and, and these are at Chico State. Um, I think I found this last one at UC Davis. Um, Dean Taylor had a collection from 1972 that was at UC Davis. Um, these were all labeled Carrots Brain Erdii in the, in the databases. Of course, that kind of changes depending on who's looking at them, because Sue Taylor's specimen, while she was working up a, uh, the first checklist of the, the vascular plants of Butte County, um, she had Jim Jokers, who was kind of a fan of Carrots, called it Carrots Brain Erdii, and Jim came back later and called it Carrots Rossii, and I came along working my thesis and called it Carrots Brain Erdii, and <laughs> finally Carrots Xeropola, and that's not unusual, well, you get a lot of that in Carrots anyway, but this particular group had even more of that. Um, and if you were wondering about Carrots Globosa, which one of our reviewers did, um, it's close to Carrots Xeropola, it's got the nerving on the perigenia, um, you can't take the shape here as meaning anything because the base is swollen and probably attracting ants to, to um, distribute the, the, the seeds. And so they, they dry, when they dry, they kind of dry differently. Um, so they're similar that way. Um, one of the main differences is that those lowest non-basal spikes are on long, flexible, um, Stocks and as they mature, they kind of lean down to the ground, maybe to be presented to um, to ants. Whereas in Xerophila, they're all short and stiff. These tend to be taller. Um, if you remember the, the the map I showed, they're all along the coast. 
um, in, in fairly good forest soil where these are all in um, serpentine or gabbro. Um, I won't look at that one again, I'm just about out of time. Um, so, the conclusion, I guess, um, kind of like our, our new, new taxon in, in Orobanki almost got lost. Um, don't ignore things that you think are unusual. Um, we're still finding things that can be sorted out as, as species, and they don't always need um, fancy phylogenetic analysis and, and that kind of stuff. Um, although there's certainly some groups and carrots that are needing that kind of treatment. Um, find someone who understands plant group you have questions about, make collections and send them to that person. At least send them to a barrier that can store that until somebody does come along and can make sense out of it. Um, become an expert yourself in your favorite group. Um, you don't have to do it all right away. I mean, look how long it took me to get this one going. And so that's it for mine, and we are out of question time. <laughs> so if you have any questions, you'll have to catch me afterwards. And I have to switch to introducing our next speaker.